Hi, welcome to day five of our summit. I am Summer King with Masterbooks Academy, and I am joined by Randy Pratt, our Vice President of Marketing, and Jessica McCuller, who is our Social Media Manager. Thank you all so much for giving us some of your time today. Hey, thank you, Summer. Good to see you, Jessica. So today we're focusing on our communities. So how did the Masterbooks um, curriculum really kind of transition into this online community? Well, when I came to Masterbooks in 2015, there was one of the girls who was working at the time did a book party on the Masterbooks Facebook page. And it wasn't terribly successful, but it was amazing to watch the community that had developed. And I even sent an email to the president, Tim Dudley at the time, and I just said, Facebook is gonna give us an opportunity to connect with an audience that nothing has ever done before. And, um, and so we had a reviewer group called Moms of Master Books. There was probably 30 or 40 people in that group that would review books and, and go and comment like on Amazon and Christian book distributors and Rainbow uh, with reviews. And so that group was just kind of sitting dormant. And I thought, well, this is a good, this is a good place. We'll start this Facebook group just to talk about master books and master books product and what's new and exciting and, and that. And uh, so we, we started doing that with 46 people in the group. And then the group just really took off and started to grow. And that was right about the same time Facebook had just said, you know, groups are important to us. And so we're going to launch um, and promote groups. And so that's, that's how we got started in, in the community as it grew, the value was just there for us to be able to hear from customers and interact, answer questions and support and, and to meet some of the greatest people that we've ever met. So being part of the Moms of Masterbook group, obviously there's some structure in place because it is run um, by a group with master books. So can you talk a little bit more about the structure that you have in place and some of the rules and why those are um, put there? Yeah, well, when you have a, a you know, um, uh, one of the funniest mm -hmm. things I've ever heard uh, when I was pastoring was where two or three are gathered, somebody's gonna be offended. And the, the, the faster we grew the group, we realized we really need some ground rules because what we did is something different than what a lot of other companies have done, we said to authors, we would love you to be part of this community. Um, our editors, our designers, uh, the company president, like there's a lot of people in the company and, and the, are part of the creative team that join this group. And one night I can remember specifically where somebody came in and they just said some really mean things about one of the products. And the author was, was really hurt because the, the person who was using the product didn't understand. And so we had to start changing the tone and say, guys, we have ground rules. Like if you're gonna be part of the group, constructive conversation is good. Uh, we don't allow people to be mean. We also, because of, we found out very quickly that if, if we allowed people to start talking about other products and other recommendations, all of a sudden our phone would start ringing and people would start asking, I, I still remember this call very well from our, our help desk saying, Why, when, when did we start selling five in a row? Like, what am I supposed to tell people? And she had no idea what the product was, but somebody had heard about it in the group and thought we sold it because it was a Masterbooks group. And so that's when we began to limit other recommendations and products. And so we've learned some things as we've grown the group. The group is, Jessica, is it over 34,000? Yes, we're close to 35,000 at this point. And so you don't go from 46 to 35,000 without learning some lessons. And, um, and that's what we've really had to do. We set some rules. We said, you know, Facebook has also been great. In fact, the Moms and Master Books group uh, is so effective that Facebook actually contacted us and said, your group is considered one of the premier groups in North America. And so we were asked to, and we were invited to participate in a special group that Facebook runs um, to help them develop their product. And so we've gotten to see some really cool things because of that. Like, you know, they've, they've said, hey, you guys are using best practices in managing this group and to create a healthy group. And so because of that, Facebook has made more changes that gave um, more tools 
for administrators. I know Jessica's been benefited from a lot of those tools as well and help us to better serve our customers. So, uh, you know, I think, I think over time watching the groups grow, the second thing we did was we launched the app, which we, there were people that were not comfortable on Facebook, but wanted to connect with us. And so we said, we'll create an app environment. I think there's over 16,000 people right now in the app uh, where we have specialized groups. So we have inspiration, we have photos, um, we have uh, a chit chat group. Uh, one of my favorites is the chapel where people who join the app post prayer requests. And for my family, because when Kristen went through breast cancer, there's nobody I would want praying for my family more than this community. Like I just know, you know, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And, uh, and I know that in this group, there were a lot of prayers that were offered that the Lord honored. And so I love the chapel and being able to offer that. So the app allows us to be more community minded, where the Moms of Master Books group allows us to be a little bit more, um, uh, customer focused, if you will. Jessica, what would you say about that? Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think, um, like you mentioned, we've learned so much over the last few years and what's kind of happened in the group. And we've quickly learned that, um, if a topic, if a post doesn't stay specifically on topic, then it's kind of like a train that's completely run off the tracks and everything gets off track and um, believe it or not, we actually receive complaints when that happens because people say, hey, I'm in this group specifically for master books. You know, there's other generalized homeschool groups and that's where I go for general information. But when things get off track or I'm asking specifically for a master books recommendation and I get inundated with other curriculum choices, it's very frustrating to people. So um, we've learned a lot. We've learned that we have to keep things on track because if we don't, then the group loses its focus and we're no longer meeting the needs that people have for why they have joined the group to begin with. Yeah. And Jessica, your title of social media manager, could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came into the position of managing um, the community accounts? Yeah. So um, originally the way that I kind of joined moms of master books was just like most other moms out there. I was looking for a new curriculum for my kids, um, looking for something that really met their needs in a way, what we were using at the time was not doing. So I stumbled upon master books and I just did a Facebook search looking for a master books group. I found moms of master books. I joined it. Um, that would have been toward the end of 2017 when I joined the group. So at the time there were a few thousand, I'm thinking probably between like three and 4,000 members at the time. Um, I was very impressed to find out that the group was actually run by master books, not, you know, just moms, but actually, um, there were authors in the group. There were people that worked for Masterbooks there that it felt like I was getting real answers instead of just someone's assumption on what the curriculum was meaning to get across. So I was so impressed by that. And um, I just kind of dove in right away. As soon as I joined the group, I wanted to learn all things Masterbooks. And so I watched all the videos and I um, I read all the conversations and I just read and found out everything that I could. And as I did that, I fell really more and more in love with the company and the curriculum that was being produced. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, um, I began to really start sharing in the group myself. So I had done all this research now. And so I was like, oh, I read this before. And I was able to help out with some of the moms and some of their questions and just being really involved um, kind of led to uh, the spring of 2018, I was asked to become a moderator. So um, I kind of joined the team on a volunteer basis at that point. And with it, it was only a few months after that, that I actually became an employee. So um, it's been about three years now that I have been filling this role and my roles changed a little bit here and there, new responsibilities added throughout the time. But overall, that's kind of how I got started. And so I've been here for about three years. 
it's been definitely a learning experience. <laughs> oh, we've been very blessed to have you guys. Yeah, and as one of the moms who joined the group a little bit later, um, and to watch you all and how you managed it, I so appreciated your leadership um, from the sidelines and now being part of the team as well, can even further appreciate all that you do to support the community. Um, so Thank we've touched you. a little bit on some of the goals that we have for the Facebook group and the app. What are the differences between them and what kind of is more of the focus with, um, you mentioned authors and contributors. We have a moderating team. Would you all mind just giving us a little peek behind the scenes as, to far, as far as all of that goes? Yeah, Jessica, why so, don't you approach the, the okay. group? Okay. So, um, the the purpose really of like moms of master books and then also the app which is a newer you know thing that we've offered is really to to build up um the moms and the dads that are homeschooling their kids um, really just to offer encouragement um, it's also to provide product information if the best place to get product information is directly from the source so mm -hmm offering our Facebook group and our app and having access to the team at Masterbooks is really um, so beneficial because you can really get correct information. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason why the groups are offered. And then providing community, offering connection with other homeschool families, um, other like-minded homeschool families. There's a lot of homeschool families out there, but we don't necessarily agree on a lot of topics. So finding other families that value a biblical worldview, that value some of these things that are so important and foundational to the master books, statement of faith and communities, um, building that community environment and those connections. Um, that's really a lot of the goal behind these groups. Yeah. And I should say the app just takes it a step further and gives us uh, one of the things that I've been married to a homeschool mom for over 25 years, and there's not a lot of affirmation in the community for a homeschool mom. Usually she's just fighting against, you know, community, mother-in-laws, husbands, whatever. Um, and so what I love was when all of a sudden this kind of became a byproduct, but a mom would post a picture of her, her kids at the at the dining room table doing school. And all of a sudden another mom would say, oh, I love how cute your kitchen is. And mm -hmm. just watching somebody get a little bit of affirmation that came from that uh, was beautiful. And so that's something that community where when you post your kids' test scores or you post your beginning of school pictures to have 10, 20, 30 other moms come in and say, we pray you have a good school year and wow, you've done a great job. I think that that's just a real value that that's a byproduct of having these groups. Well, and the really neat thing is as families are looking online and they are looking for curriculum options, when you go to so many of these other curriculum providers and their pages, um, the pages have a very different feel than the master books page. And, and really that element is community. Would you all agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, from a marketing standpoint, we had a mark. My, my background was sales and marketing and then heavy into the homeschool curriculum and textbooks. And then I took a stint as a pastor and part of turning around a church and growing a church is to build strong community, you know, people tribe. And, and once you build a tribe, that tribe helps each other and, and strengthens each other and all of that. And so I think it was just a natural progression of homeschool marketing pastoring to pastor marketing, where mm -hmm. that's really what we try to do with Master Books, Moms of Master Books is the, the moderators and Jessica and the team and in the app with Desiree and the team there, um, and now with the Academy as well, is pastoring the, the homeschool users that are part of our community, our tribe. And one of the really unique features that um, we can find on your site are the lives. Would you tell us a little bit about how the lives came to be and the topics that are generally covered in those? Yeah, so if you've watched any of my videos, when I do Q and A's or whatever, I tend to go into a little bit of a rant. And so early on, I would rant a little bit about some of my philosophies. In my life, I probably tend to provide too much value sometimes. So 
Um, but we would get feedback from people who are looking for somebody who had experience. And I would, I would do these things like, uh, there was one video I remember just saying, listen, if I could tell my younger self something like, hey, hey, dumb 20 year old Randy, you need to know this to support your wife. Well, that video got shared with other dumb 20 year old husbands all over the, the, the interwebs and, and there was a lot of feedback. And so then we would go to conventions and husbands would come up to me and, and their wives would come up and say, you know, we got a lot from this video. And so we started doing the teaching tips as a way to kind of invest in our community. Mm -hmm. And it's an eat the meat, spit out the bones. We don't know everything. I don't, uh, you know, for me, it's just, hey, these are some lessons I learned. If you can learn something and save you a little bit of pain, or maybe here's something I can, can offer to a family to be a little bit more successful. Then, of course, Masterbooks is more successful in a home that's more successful as well. But I think it's part of that. Um, that pastoring mindset that is so infused into our culture. So um, that's really where that came from. And the lives are not kind of just that one and done, right? I mean, Masterbooks makes them available after the fact. If someone's watching right now and they want to know uh, where can I find these videos, what's the best place for them to go look for them? The best place right now is the YouTube channel, Masterbooks. If you do you go to YouTube channel and type Masterbooks, uh, there is a channel that has all of our playlists. We use, uh, we have product playlists. We have the teaching tips. Um, as we continue to add and develop, uh, that channel continues to grow. So just another extension of the community that's really offered and the value that Masterbooks offers directly to the customers. Um, as part of that extension of not just the Moms of Masterbooks, the Masterbooks app, but also the Masterbooks YouTube channel. And one of the benefits for us has been not, it's not just one way community. What mm -hmm. I love about teaching tips is if you go into the app, my teaching tips are live, but there are people participating. And so we're able to answer questions. And in the Moms of Masterbooks, our product is so much better today than what it was five years ago because we have such good feedback. So when there's a friction point um, that we recognize is coming up in our curriculum, we're able to address that. And then when we create a new product, we also have that feedback and experience. And so I know Jessica has been part of the development process now with authoring Where Faith Grows, which is one of the new products coming out that we're really excited about. I think that product is leaps and bounds ahead of products that was developed even a year or two years ago because we've learned so much from our audience and we've also learned from the track record. You know, when we started homeschooling 25 years ago, we hoped it worked. Now with 25 years of experience and graduating five students, I know that um, it works. Like you can't convince me it doesn't. When we started developing curriculum and, and we took the best of practices and kind of put it together, you're in that place where you hope this works. Now that we're five to eight years out, it's like, I know Masterbooks works. Like we've got the test scores to prove it. We've got the families who are going to give up homeschooling that turned around and said, no, we're going to continue homeschooling. Like we know it works now. And that's come because of a byproduct of being in a community with users and hearing what they have to say, hearing what successes they have, hearing what, what challenges they encountered and then developing better products. Absolutely, like even with what you're talking about right now, I think a neat part of the groups is sometimes we'll have a mom come in and say, hey, this element of the course just isn't working for my family the way it's written. And then other moms will jump in and say, it didn't really work for us either. We adapted and we tried this instead. And so that's a really neat part of the communities where you can say, you can kind of get feedback from other moms, but then also even as a company, we're able to see those conversations and to see, okay, let's make some changes in this area because this part is maybe not quite like a perfect fit. And so then we can make you know, we can adapt things in the future. And, and part of that is we do things in small print runs and we can make changes quickly when there is some type of a friction point like that. So that's a huge benefit of the community. 
for connecting with other families and figuring out what they're doing to work. And then also for us as a company to be able to make those changes that meet the needs of the homeschool community. And as you mentioned a moment ago, looking towards the future, what are some future um, horizon plans that Masterbooks has kind of in the works? Well, definitely continuing to invest in the Moms of Masterbooks and the app. Uh, one of the most exciting things that we've done this last year was to launch the Academy. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the Academy is a work in process. If you're familiar with Masterbooks and you've been part of our journey, we growth hack. Growth hacking means that you invest a little bit, you see what works. When something works, you invest more. When it doesn't work, you retreat and try something else. And so the Academy is strongly in a growth hack phase where we're seeing what's working, what's resonating, and what to work with. Uh, I, I believe, you know, Masterbook's mission statement is ink on paper to touch eternity. Um, I say impact eternity. I get corrected on that often. But um, <laughs> you, it seems you have to sign up somewhere behind you. I can't. I can't botch it up this time, but um, one, of the, one of the things that I believe is the Lord has brought the right people in at the right time. The Lord brought Jessica into the Mama Master Books when it was needed uh, mm -hmm. to have, have her energy and, and her attention to detail and all of the things that she brought. Um, your story is very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell, me, tell everyone your story, how, how, what happened in Nashville that changed your life dramatically? Forever, the trajectory changed. <laughs> yes, well, and you know, we talked about the lives a little bit ago and the Moms of Master books. And so um, I was like, Jessica, I was a mom searching for a, a different alternative for a child that was struggling. And I found Master Books. I found the Moms of Master Books, and I just spent hours researching, looking into the curriculum, began watching the lives. And on one of them, uh, you were talking about coming to the Nashville Convention, and my family was headed there. And you were talking about, you know, if you kind of have a background in co op development, you know, we're really looking to. Uh, launch a new project. If you have some minutes, stop by the booth. Well, I was already stopping by the booth to check out curriculum anyway. And that got us talking about the possibility of launching an online academy as an extension of Masterbooks. And so uh, that's what we've done in this past year. The growth has been phenomenal. The response has been great. And we are adding more courses every day. And so your background, tell, tell us about your background, because there was a reason that I was really interested um, in optimizing and using your skills with the Academy. Yeah, I come from a fairly eclectic background. Um, I did spend my younger years in public schools, but as I got into the older grades, we found that the school systems just, they were not what we wanted anymore. And so um, my brother and I actually asked my parents if they would consider homeschooling. And so we did, we made that transition. And then I was actually a homeschool graduate and uh, went on to get a de uh, degree and began teaching in a more traditional classroom, uh, trying to make a difference in a way that I had seen, uh, you know, issues and failures in my own education in the school systems. And so I went into the traditional classroom. Um, I wasn't able to stay all that long when uh, my husband uh, went into uh, active duty service with the military. And so we began moving and then it came time for our oldest who needed um, some school options. And we were looking and looking into the future, knowing that we were going to move multiple times in those early years. And we just didn't want to interrupt our educational um, process and, and development. And so I was familiar with homeschooling. So we chose to homeschool and within her first three years of homeschooling we lived in seven different states so it became something that kept us connected as a family um, but in that third year we kind of settled down into one of our assignments and began to make that correction um, but in the process of moving and working with so many different co-ops and cover schools um, the state that we currently live in we became very involved in our local cover and i began teaching with them and then moved into an administrative position with them as well so it was kind of this weird mixture of um, all the things that, you know, you get frustrated sometimes when you're in your story and God moves in ways that you just don't understand and you're not even all that happy about. And yes. then you get to a point and you look back and you go, oh, that's what it was for. And talking to you at Nashville and realizing, looking back, he was creating, you know, a story I didn't even know he was writing. So, yes. Yeah. 
And this is part of the story that he's preparing us for that we don't have any comprehension of uh, for the future. I think homeschool families, I'm going to rant for a minute, but I do think homeschool families have such a, um, we're called the Lord. This is, this is a position that the Lord has called us to. And, and these journeys that we have when we homeschool to be encouraged that sometimes when doors are closing and opportunities are changing and we're moving, like I'm thinking about five years ago when the Lord moved us from New York to Arkansas, there were parts of me that didn't know if that was the best thing that, that you could expect. And then even breast cancer with Kristen going through that. And yet I see the hand of the Lord in it. And the farther you are away from those experiences, the more you're like, you were absolutely in that. And so you're both of your journeys and the way the Lord has brought you into master books to work with us. And we are so blessed um, to be part of your stories and have them intertwined. And then also the users that uh, we come in contact with all the time and the testimonies. Now, Summer, you, you also authored a course. So tell us about the course that's in the Academy because today you're gonna be interviewing other instructors from the Academy. Yes, I'm so excited about today's lineup for the summit and getting to introduce so many of you all to our instructors. Uh, I am an instructor with the Academy. I currently have the world history course for high school that's available through Masterbooks Academy. And I think you did an excellent job of bringing more biblical worldview into the course. And I just, I love what you did in teaching the course. I thought you did a really good job. And you are also, you help the other instructors bring value to their courses. So as soon as I'm, you know, like if I connect with an author or an instructor, I put them in touch with you and you pretty much take over with helping them develop the product that, that they're going to roll out. Right. In developing the world history course, um, I was one of the earlier instructors to the academy. And so like you had mentioned before, growth hacking our way into success there, um, it gives me that unique perspective. Um, I know that I worked really hard in the world history course to bring in um, that daily content, that biblical worldview. And at Masterbooks, that's really what we pride ourselves on is giving that apologetics based biblical worldview in every subject, because there's no subject in which God is not permeated. And so um, the academy really exists to come alongside families to provide that supplemental um, to the curriculum that they are going through, through quality instructors. And the lessons are still in that master book style of being shorter quality lessons. Nothing is sacrificed in the quality of the instruction. It's just given at a level that's so much more attainable and um, you know easily remembered by the students as they go through the courses. Yeah, very well put. I, one, I wanna give a shout out as we wrap this up to, um, your mom and the course that she's doing. Tell us just a little bit about what's coming and uh, I think it's gonna be an awesome course. Yeah, one of the things we've really enjoyed at the Masterbooks Academy site is the ability to add in electives. So the traditional process, um, which I know Jessica and Craig talked about how you know a, a book really comes to be with Masterbooks, well, it's a bit of a process. At Masterbooks Academy, we can speed that up a little bit and get electives into the hands of our families. So currently we have great electives like PE and um, you know intro to guitar. Well, one of the things that um, I knew was that my mom had worked in deaf ministry um, and had been uh, an interpreter at the collegiate level and her heart for the deaf and hearing com impaired community is just something that I thought like this is going to be a great fit for Masterbooks Academy. So we've been developing a very basic intro to sign language course, but it's not just like any other course where you'll I mean you'll still learn the alphabet and the numbers and uh, quite a bit of vocabulary, but the course really builds ultimately to sharing the gospel through a very simple um, hymn, Jesus Loves Me, and doing the first two verses of that and explaining the gospel to our kids. And then also now they're going to have the ability to sign the gospel and then um, do the ABCs of salvation as well. So the encouragement isn't just to absorb the knowledge, right? That's never what we want our kids to do. We want them to go out and make an impact. Um, I know that, you know, it's ink on paper to impact eternity, but I think about the academy as being an extension of that, which is, you know, the impact of eternity is through the instruction that we get. So the instruction through the academy to impact eternity. For sure. 
that course, that's going to be available this fall, right? Mm -hmm. We anticipate that to be available in the fall of, of um, 2021. So, well, awesome. We're excited and I'm excited today to watch and see the interviews that you do with uh, the instructors. The Lord has blessed us with some incredible instructors as well. It's like he just keeps opening up opportunities and new doors. So I'll let you wrap up, Summer, but uh, we appreciate having you on board. And Jessica, we really appreciate having you on board as well. Masterbooks is um, a better company because both of you are part of it. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Well, as Randy just said, you can catch uh, interviews with our instructors today on our Masterbook Summit. We've got a lineup including our science instructor, Mr. Brian Young, Kate Lupanen, who teaches our middle school and high school maths and has been such a help to so many families. We also are going to do an interview with David Farley, who is currently our guitar instructor and is going to be giving us a sneak peek of music theory, which I know so many of you are excited about. We've also got our PE coach, Coach Stamper, talking about all of the different levels. So you'll definitely want to check out the rest of the interviews that will be coming today as part of our Masterbooks Curriculum Summit. Awesome. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>